Hello all. I know it's been a while, but I was gone for competition for a week, and last week I was out sick, but uh, I want to add something to those control board videos that I did on identifying components on a control board, and a couple weeks back I did a video on the Samsung refrigerator, and I found this fuse block that was connected to the defrost heaters and talked a little bit about them. So I I continued to do more research on them and I started to see a lot of manufacturers now are starting to do this double fuse, whether it's a thermal fuse or an inline fuse. Um, and they seem to be adding them in all the newer refrigerators. I have yet to come down to why they did that, but I'm still doing some research. Here's a KitchenAid bottom mount uh, unit, uh, 600A gas. Uh, notice that it has two thermal fuses in series with the defrost heater. There's no defrost fine metal, there's no defrost uh, single thermal fuse. They have a thermal fuse on both sides. Um, one of the manufacturers was talking to us about the um, thermal fuses being on both sides of the heater and they said if the polarity is wrong on the appliance, the appliance will still function, but the fuse being only on one side doesn't protect it if power comes in from the other side. Now here's a picture of what that thermal fuse would look like on the KitchenAid. And there'd be two of these. This would be one here and one here. If it's a thermal fuse, that would be located somewhere near the heating element where it's going to measure the heat. A regular fuse like the Samsung one, and I'll show you in a minute, it would be more located in the back, but it's also in line with the defrost heater. So you need to start paying attention to these schematics and notice that a lot of these new manufacturers are putting multiple heaters on their units in the refrigerators. If we look at this one here, this is Whirlpool. I know it's the same manufacturer, but this one here also has two thermal fuses in series with the defrost heater. This is the model number for that particular unit. But those thermal fuses are connected to the defrost heater. They're in the actual heater harness. You have to actually order this whole little plug assembly here. And if you look at these two little black uh, connectors here. You got a white wire coming in and a white one coming out. And then you got a brown wire connected to a black connector going out. That's your white and brown wire here. These thermal fuses are these two black uh, pieces inside. And if either one of them fail, your heater won't work. Now, if you didn't know that they were there, you might miss them because it just looks like it's a connection inside the wiring harness. They look almost like the ice maker. Uh, the Whirlpool ice makers that have the thermal fuse on, uh, connected to the mold on the power supply coming in. So I just wanted to bring it up that you need to start paying attention that we have now two thermal fuses and one of them could be bad and you won't have a defrost system. Now if we look over here, this is the Samsung one that I've talked about. These aren't thermal fuses because they're located in the back. and. The reason I have the two pictures is that this is a single defrost heater circuit, whereas our, our defrost heaters here, there's four fuses here because this has two defrost heaters. This is one that has a defrost heater in the refrigerator evaporator and a defrost heater on the freezer evaporator. So two of these fuses, notice you got two with a stripe here and then you have two, two white ones so that two go with one heater and the other two go with the other heater again before and after the heater. If you look here, if we had those fuses, the power would go up and over through the heater and down through uh, the heating element and then back up and over through the second fuse and out. It also has a thermal fuse and a bimetal on the evaporator. These two fuses, which are, are here in this fuse block, they're located in the back of the refrigerator. So some of these now, they've all been added within the past year or so on newer products. So you need to keep up and make sure that if you're having a defrost problem, it's not just these two components, which you're used to seeing as a defrost heater on the evaporator and some have thermal fuses for years, but now they've added these additional fuses. If we look here, Frigidaire. I didn't get a picture of it yet. I'm still looking for them, but here we got a defrost heater, the center line green, which is ground. And then we have two thermal fuses before and after the heater. So my biggest conclusion is now that we've gone to 600A refrigerators, if we have a short and there's a possible refrigerant leak, that short could ignite that refrigerant and cause a fire inside the cabinet. 
even more than just a regular refrigerator defrost that may it got stuck in the defrost cycle for too long that if that shorts out like a heating element on a dishwasher or, or, or stove it could create an open arc which could also ignite the gas and I took a picture of a Fisher Pykel dishwasher they put two thermal fuses and again I have, have to figure out why they said if the polarities reverse that's what that is but if your element shorts out on those refrigerators water can get inside that element well not just water when it's defrosting but if we are leaking isobutane gas that could be ignited not just by the heat off the element by about the electrical sparks that could happen within those units so i know it's a short video but i want to bring to your attention that now we've added two fuses one before and after the heater on a lot of these manufacturers units so when you're troubleshooting a defrosting problem on one of these newer units you need to take a close look at the schematic and see if they have those heaters inside